This is a breast implant. And I wonder why I had that pain in my back. The weight. The textured bag filled with saline used to be inside of Debbie Andrews' body. She says it's the reason she spent more than two decades suffering from rashes, inflammation, and chest pains. In July 2019, she had her implants removed. From one day to the next, she says all of her symptoms went away. Debbie is one of thousands of women who believe she recovered from a mysterious condition dubbed breast implant illness. She's one of the lucky ones. Tracy Moeller has been trying to get her implants removed since last year. My skin has changed colors. I constantly have this rash. Meanwhile, the symptoms she attributes to her implants just keep on getting worse. Panic attacks, severe indigestion, brain fog, vision problems, insomnia, um, heart palpitations. We spoke with more than 100 women who share similar symptoms and echo each other's suffering. I've had my implants for 15 years and started seeing symptoms as far back as 13 years ago. I pray every day for surgery. Tracy has developed a routine to cope with her pain and inflammation. I take about seven different types of medication in the morning. And then depending on my pain, I'll take another Vicodin and Motrin. Some days I need it, some days I don't. She got her implants in 2005 after giving birth to twins and gaining weight. Her symptoms started about two years later. I'm swollen every, every, time, I, every time I wake up. So this is my method to my madness. Usually about 40 minutes later, I'm not good, but I'm a little better. Things got so bad, she quit her job. I can't remember like when I really turned a corner for the worse. I started having speech problems. I had difficulty spelling, severe okay. panic attacks, a lot of insomnia. I just felt empty. She began researching her symptoms and eventually discovered the term breast implant illness on Facebook. The more I read, the more I felt validated. But finding a surgeon to remove her implants was harder than she'd expected. Some doctors told us they don't want to strain their working relationships with implant manufacturers. And others said they are skeptical about breast implant illness, which is not an officially recognized diagnosis. It's been a very controversial issue because most of the breast implant illness symptoms seem to be rheumatologic in nature. There are so many women in the population that do have rheumatoid diseases that cause and effect have been very hard to nail down. But as more and more women move to explant, researchers are studying the link. We recognize increasingly that there are problems with implants. It may turn out that if you have a history of autoimmune disease, maybe it's better not to place a silicone device in. But I think the research will bear that out. There are plastic surgeons out there who say they've connected the dots. Dr. David Rankin, based out of Jupiter, Florida, doesn't put implants in at all anymore. Instead, he's fully booked with explant surgeries through to next year. You were thinking, hey, I'm just going to take around a couple of years, right? Anything, really. no. Most of my patients have a certain degree of, we call it brain fog, just not thinking straight, um, fatigue. I see a tremendous amount of thyroid issues, um, a tremendous amount of skin rashes, skin irritations, food allergies that develop, you name it, and I've seen it. We spoke to a handful of other plastic surgeons across the country, from Florida to Arizona to California to Virginia, who also perform solely explants. Okay. I don't take out any breast tissue, okay. so I'm going to use Sorry. what you have. They agree. The recovery rate after removal is too high for them to ethically continue putting implants in. I see improvement in greater than 90% of my patients. Some of it's subjective. Some of it is evidence-based with uh, improving lab function tests. I can see clinically a lot of the skin issues that these patients have go away, a lot of the allergic reactions that they're having go away. All right, surgery time will be about an hour and 45 minutes. Chelsea Harrison got her implants six years ago. 
after giving birth to her first daughter back when she was a bodybuilder and bikini model. Migraines, body rashes, brain fog, and fatigue soon followed. It hurts to sleep on the right side because I have that encapsulation, which is basically your body rejecting the bags. In her search for health, Chelsea became a yoga teacher. Just allowing your natural state of breath, not trying to force anything. But the symptoms were still there. And exhale your left hand down to the mat. For many women, the experience of getting implants and then getting rid of them is a process of self-discovery. Debbie began thinking about implants after she found out at age 24 that she wasn't going to be able to have children. When I lost the uterus and I feel like I'm not a woman. You know, if you want to take the Bible literally, and we're created to um, have children and carry on life. And that wasn't going to happen for me. Soon after her health crisis, in 1995, she adopted 11-month-old twin girls. They were so cute. They were just so cute. I wanted these big, voluptuous breasts. I wanted to cradle and rock my babies against them. It was an overcompensation, a feeling like I was not a woman without my female body parts. Now she's a grandmother. What's going on? And her implants feel like they are from another lifetime. They were awful. They were beautiful, but they were really big and uncomfortable. And from the just the day they were put in, I was sick from that day on until the day of my explant. Just a few years after getting the implants, Debbie was diagnosed with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and chronic migraines. After decades of pain, pill bottles, and a growing list of symptoms, she had her implants taken out in July 2019. Her lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and chronic migraines went away. The first thing that I noticed, I could take a full breath without having such horrible pain. I said, oh my God, I can breathe. Tracy had grown accustomed to reading stories like Debbie's on Facebook, so she was thrilled when she was finally able to schedule an explant. It was going to cost more than $10,000, about the same amount she paid to have them put in 15 years ago. But health insurance wouldn't cover it, so she started saving. Tracy felt too sick to work, so her husband picked up more hours. But things fell apart three days before Christmas, when suddenly, he left her. I needed like another $1,800, and that would have came from his, you know, his working, his employment. Um, then he left, you know, so. Tracy took her $700 down payment back from the doctor to pay rent. I want to be happy. I want to live my life. I want to be healthy, but it's not like I want to kill myself to to relieve myself from pain, but it's just, it's like, a th it's thought, it's just there. I think it's more the helplessness. She finds emotional support through Facebook groups filled with thousands of women who say they're fighting the same battle. This is Colleen, she got her implants May of um, 2008. This is not living, this is existing. I posted on on Facebook and that I was um, going to do an interview and I wanted everybody to send me a letter. I want to show this isn't about me. This is about Carol in Phoenix, Lisa in Texas, Dawn in Tennessee, and Laurel in Canada. And then this one says, explanted and proud. And we've, we've created a sisterhood. All I know is that I gotta get these out, and I don't know when, and I don't know how, but I gotta get them out. Breast implants are still the most popular cosmetic procedure in the United States, and most women don't get them removed. But even Pamela Anderson has said goodbye to the surgical enhancement that made this signature shot of one of the most popular television shows in history, saying they just didn't feel right anymore. Other celebrities like Victoria Beckham and Crystal Hefner, and more recently Chrissy Teigen, have also made the decision to explant. And various kinds of implants have actually been recalled because they've been shown to increase cancer risk. Debbie only found out hers had been recalled after she had them removed. 
Chelsea's doctor agreed. Her double Ds were probably making her sick. Just a little bit of medicine now. I did it. You did it. It's over. Yay. <laughs> Three months after surgery, Chelsea's experience echoed what we had heard from so many women. The biggest change for me after explant surgery is waking up ready to go. I have a lot more energy and it makes doing things with the kids a lot easier. My brain fog is gone. I feel like myself again. Seeing my implants outside of my body makes me feel an immense amount of gratitude. Gratitude that they're out. Gratitude for the message that I'm able to relay unto other women. You sit with me. Okay. I hope that eventually, beyond Facebook and beyond social media, that women learn about this and stand up, speak out. Some of it's embarrassing. Some people don't even want to admit they've ever had implants. I'm not past the self-image. I didn't end up with cute little boobs. I ended up with two really big holes. I'm not, I'm not past that. That's very hurtful and, and painful and hard for me. It will come with time. It's getting big. It's getting quite, quite big. Mm -hmm.